Uh, Edinburgh. The city always accidentally pronounces Edinburgh. My name is Emlazer, let's get to it. Before Edinburgh was known as Edinburgh, it used to be called Din Eden or Dun Eden. This is why the modern Scottish Gaelic name for the city is Dun Eden. The first half of the name Dun was a Celtic word meaning fort, most likely referring to the Edinburgh Castle. Eden, on the other hand, was the name for the area Edinburgh is located in, however some scholars argue that the word was solely used to refer just to the castle or the city. Then when the Anglo-Saxon came and brought the Old English, they got rid of the prefix and added a suffix, burra, meaning fort. And since then the city was called Edinburgh, with a slight modifications to the name by various languages. Though the settlement in Edinburgh was found in Cramond dating back to the Mesolithic era. Later on, traces of Bronze Age and Iron Age settlements have been found in Castle Rock and Arthur's Seat. The culture of these settlements closely resembles the Celtic culture of mainland Europe. When Romans arrived to the area, they discovered the Celtic Brythonic tribes, which they pushed northward into the highlands and established a fort at Cramond, which they connected by a road to York. After the withdrawal of the Romans in the early 5th century, the area came under the control of the Celtic Botadini tribe. At some point in the early 7th century, the town fell under the rule of the Gododin, who built a fort somewhere within the bounds of Edinburgh. This fort was called Dun Eden, and this is where the first name of Edinburgh came from. During this time, the territory of Lothian came to existence, with Dun Eden being its main stronghold. With the arrival of the Anglos, the kingdom of Gododin started to fall apart. In the year 638, Gododin forces were defeated by the King Oswald of Northumbria, and Edinburgh with the Lothian region came under the control of Northumbria. It was during this time that the prefix of Dun was taken out and the Anglican suffix Burra was added. This created the name for the city that we still use today, Edinburgh. Now newly renamed, Edinburgh marked one of the most northern points of Northumbria. The exact date of construction of the fortress on Castle Hill is unknown. However, it has been thought that the Northumbrians created a fortress here in the 7th century, but the only indications by the archaeological and historical evidence are that by the end of the Edinburgh's Northumbrian period, there was some form of a noble residence on the site. In the late 9th century, during the Viking Age, the Danelaw was established splitting Northumbrian power and influence. Due to this, Northumbria was unable to protect its most northern lands and in the 10th century, Edinburgh came under the control of the King of Scotland. In 973 CE, the English King, Edgar the Peaceful, formally gave the lands of Lothian to Kenneth II, King of Scots, thereafter ensuring that Edinburgh will remain under the control of the Scots ever since. In the 12th century, King David I recognized the importance of Edinburgh and established it as one of the first royal boroughs in Scotland, protected by his royal fortress on the slope below the Castle Rock. It was also during this time when Edinburgh's merchant class developed around the city, making it a valuable port to the Scots. It was during the 14th and 16th century when Edinburgh became truly important to the Scottish Kingdom and was arguably the most important city in Scotland. Edinburgh's numbers for taxation sometimes equaled the combined figures for the next three boroughs in the kingdom. During the Reformation, Edinburgh played a vital role. First in the 16th century, it was where Queen Mary of Scots spent most of her time, and it was also the culmination point for the start of the War of the Three Kingdoms. In the 17th century, King James VI of Scotland succeeded to the throne of England, uniting the monarchies in the Union of Crowns. With King James VI, now the first, preoccupied ruling two kingdoms from London, the Scottish Parliament in Edinburgh became more powerful than ever. In the 17th century, Edinburgh was still enclosed by its medieval fortifications, making building space in the city very scarce. Because of this, many buildings started to grow upwards with some having 14 to 15 stories. It was also during this time that the class separation started to occur, with lower floors being occupied by peasants and farmers, and the upper floors being occupied by merchants and lords. In the early 18th century, Edinburgh lost the Scottish Parliament and the Acts of Union, which united the English and Scottish Parliaments and moved them to London. During the 18th century, Edinburgh became the most densely populated, overcrowded and sanitary city in Europe. It was said that the lower class people living at the bottom of the streets didn't know each other by how they looked, but by how they smelt. You can see that the higher class living in the same buildings might have a problem with this problem. That is why it was also during this time that Edinburgh finally started to expand past its city borders. Expanding northwards, southwards, and the draining of Norloch, creating a beautiful park. This is when the higher classes started to move to more cleaner and lucrative places more outside of the city, leaving the congested center. Also, the 18th century is called the Enlightenment Age in Edinburgh, with some scholars calling it the Athens of the North. Therefore, during this time it seems fitting to give a shout out to University of Edinburgh. The university was founded as the College of Law but quickly expanded into many other colleges, most notably medicine and literature, language and culture. The university played a pivotal role in Edinburgh's Enlightenment, drawing scholars from all around the British Empire. There are many notable writers, scientists, doctors, historians associated with the school. Also, to give the university some years accreditation, Benjamin Franklin 
Irving of Philadelphia visited the university and noted that the university housed a set of truly great men, professors of several branches of knowledge as have ever appeared in any age or country. During the 19th century, Edinburgh wasn't as industrialized as other cities in Britain and therefore it lost its title as the most populous city in Scotland to Glasgow. Nevertheless, Edinburgh still retained its culture and political importance to the Scots throughout the 19th century. During the 20th century, Edinburgh was largely spared from any major bombings during the both world wars. Nevertheless, the Scottish National War Memorial commemorates lost soldiers during World War I, where one out of every three adult Scottish men died. Edinburgh now, with its magnificent architecture lining every street, stands as the testament of the old European Scottish ways and is willing to confront with its centuries of experience any obstacle standing in its and Scottish way.